All right, Shalom. I want to give our praises to Yahawa, Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Haraka Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles of great millstone that rule well. Salutations to the men of the hope and sincere elect. It's Makaza from a trend that come. Just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. All right, and as you can see, I look up this page and on Google saying that eight Bible verses on Christ descent into hell. Now, we in the know through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai know that it have no fiery pit called hell where Satan dwells. So for sure, you know, Yahweh Shai never went into no fiery pit to have a, a, a brawl with Satan to get the keys then to go back to his father. All right? And I'll bring one scripture to cut that, you know, nip it in the bud one time. This is Luke. Just bear my second. This is Luke. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. And when Yahweh Shad cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So guess what? Yahweh Shai said, Into thy hand I commend my spirit. So Father, give my spirit into your hand. And the scripture said the most high heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. So we know the most high above. So then, if Yahweh Shai descended into a fiery pit called hell, why then he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit? My next, my next precept to back it up. This is Ecclesiastes. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20. It says, all go unto the same place. All are from the dust and all do and all and all turn to the dust again. It says, Who knoweth the spirit of man goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? So that is Yahweh beast. Why would then would the spirit go downward? The scripture said the spirit of man goeth upward. So Yahweh Shai, it have no scripture backing up that Yahweh Shai went into no fiery pit because it have no scripture backing up that it have a fiery pit called hell. And I will get into that hell word just now. Alright? So now, I just want to examine some of the scriptures they have here. It says, um, for, for the first reference, it says, St. Paul teaches us in Ephesians 4.19, that when well, you have Christ, let us read verbatim. It says that Christ, our Lord, descended into hell after he offered his life on the cross. Alright? So let me go into Ephesians 4, 9. It says what? It says, Now he that ascended, there's the King James Version. Now he, not know that he ascended, what is it, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Now, where is the lower parts of the earth? Alright? Now, you might say that talking about hell. No, that ain't talking about hell. That's actually talking about the grave. When you bury someone. And we're going to go into that. And I'm actually going to use one of their reference to cut reference 1. Now, look up reference 2. It says, St. Peter said in Acts 2.24 that God had raised up Mashiach, having loosed the sorrows of hell, as it was impossible that he should be holding by it. So now let me read in the King James Version. This is Acts 2 verse 24. It says, Whom Yahweh had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding by it. The pains of death is what? When somebody die, and the sorrow that comes with it, we have people mourning for that person that died. Right? Verse 25. It says, For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, which was talking about his son Yahweh um, Solomon, which is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation, because the Bible does speak about reincarnation. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. It says, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Alright? Now, so when David said this, you might think David was speaking about himself, but he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about Yahweh Shai. Alright? 
jumping down to verse 31 it says he saying this before speak of the resurrection of mashiach that his soul was not left in hell neither did his flesh see corruption now when you look up the word hell it has nothing to do with a fiery pit it actually means the grave and when it says not see corruption mean his body ain't gonna rot so you, he, you're not going to allow me to remain in the grave, but you're going to resurrect me to life. That is why he said, seeing this before, speak of the resurrection of Mashiach. So when it says that my soul will not remain in hell, you know, my body see corruption. Just like Lazarus. Lazarus is basically the same thing. Lazarus' soul didn't remain in hell. Neither his, well, his flesh began to see corruption, actually. All right? But unlike Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai flesh didn't see corruption. All right, Yahweh Shai flesh didn't see corruption. Now, let me look up that word hell. We go in Bible concordance. And we look up that word hell. All right, hell in Acts chapter 2. And the, he, and the Greek word there is Hades, which when I go back to Hades, Hades is actually you know, from Greek mythology. But the word there is what? The grave. Alright? So you're going to allow me to be in the grave. Now some people might say, well, look it out of hell. Well, alright. Well then, as the lesson progressed, you're going to see why hell as a, as a fiery pit would just be omitted because it have no fiery pit called hell. Alright? So that cut that Ephesian, that, um, that Ephesians 9. Because it says what? When he descended into the lower parts of the earth, it just meant that he died and was in the grave. Alright? He died and was in the grave. And that is it. Alright? Now, a, f a, f a famous one that I like to bring out is Revelation. Let me see. Make sure if they have it here. Alright, so they don't have it here. I'll bring it out anyways. This is Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. It says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And that is with them church. People like to run with and say that he went and had a ruckus with Satan. And got hold of the keys of death and hell and freed the souls that were in hell. All right, that is the church doctrine, but you can't back that with the scriptures. This is John chapter 1, verse 4. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So when Yahweh Shai mm -hmm. said that he got he got the power over death and hell, means what? That he was able to give everlasting life. And we're going to back up through the scriptures. When he said that he got the keys of death and hell. Means that he had the ability now to give to his elect everlasting life. This is 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. And it reads. In a moment. Mm -hmm. Alright. It says. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, meaning this flesh, must put on incorruption, which is the heavenly body. All right? And I'll read high up. This is verse 44. It says, Um... I start at verse 39. It says, All flesh is not of the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There is also celestial bodies, which is when we're going to change, we're going to inherit that celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial, which is this terrestrial body we're in right now, this house. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrest terrestrial is another. All right? Now, the glory of the terrestrial is that we can have sex and make children. The scripture said, go and fill the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 to 28. Now, the celestial bodies, which are the angels, they don't have sex. 
because they were never once seen the scriptures make reference to a female angel. So that cut that bullshit with the angels come down and have sex with the daughters of men. Alright? You, you people need to understand the scriptures. Alright? Going on. Verse 41. It says, There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differed from another star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption. Because we sown in corruption. And is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor and is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, which our body is weak right now. It is raised in power. And we're going to be raised in that immortal body. All right? It is sown in, in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. All right? So, when Yahweh Shai comes, we're going to inherit that spiritual body, which is that immortal body. When it could be clearly said that we get the victory over death and hell because Yahweh Shai had the keys for it. Meaning, he, the scripture said, did not the scripture say give the keys unto David? Unto um, unto Peter, which is David in the reincarnation. Alright? He gave us the ability. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Did not Yahweh Shai say that he got the keys of death and hell meaning that he had the ability now to grant us everlasting life which we wouldn't die no more which we wouldn't go off anymore all right going back verse um verse 53 it says for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality now when you're immortal you don't die anymore so then Hell have no power because he ain't gonna go in the grave anymore. Which we already know that hell means the grave. And death have no more power because we ain't gonna die anymore. Alright? We ain't gonna die anymore. So then therefore that is the reason why he said he got the victory over death and hell. Alright? It says, verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall it... We brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because when the elect be made immortal, death and hell have no victory over them because we ain't going to be dying no more. It says the sting of death is sin because when it's sin, that is what causes it to death. And the strength of sin is the law because by the law, we know sin. And when we sin, that is what caused us to die in the first place, beginning with Adam. Because of Adam's sin, we all die. So now, that first Adam, which was Yahweh Shai, back in the reincarnation, now the second Adam, which Yahweh Shai came as himself and gave us the entrance to enter back into um, everlasting life. So therefore, we would not die anymore. All right? It says, but thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So, Yahweh Shai, it wasn't talking about no dead people that was in the grave Yahweh Shai went and took from. No, it wasn't talking about that. It was talking about us in our dead state. Alright? This is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. It says, not Ephesians, um, my bad. Colossians. Let's bear more one second. Read more in a second. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespass and sins. Alright? So the dead that Yahweh was talking about, that he got the victory for, was Israel that wasn't living as. Living to the righteousness of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, we were going off as a people. Alright? And that is the victory. By us, the scripture said, Know ye not that so many of you have baptized into Yahweh Shai, have baptized into his death? Meaning that we're going to rise in that newness with Yahweh Shai. Meaning that we ain't going to die anymore once we inherit that immortal body. And we ain't going to be going into the grave anymore. 
So that is how he got the victory over death and hell. Alright? That is how he got the victory over death and hell. Going on. Um, says saints in verse in um third reference it says Saint Peter also wrote in first Peter three nineteen it says Mashiach is coming in spirit preached to the spirits that were in prison. So now they say, Yeah, see the, the spirits that were in prison, let me see what the King James said. This is first Peter three nineteen. It says, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So did Yahweh Shai went to preach to um, spirits that were in hell? So-called hell? Let me see what the scripture had to see. This is Psalms. Psalms 88 verse 10. Will thou show wonders to the dead? Was not preaching the word of wonder. And this is the David asking, Will thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Salah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? And thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? No. When you die, that, that flesh don't deteriorate. The spirit with the most high. And the spirit don't sin. Alright? Your spirit don't be... Your spirit not... How, how do I put it like this? Your spirit don't be sinning so then... It have no need for your spirit to be in no fiery pit. Because Satan up there with the most high too. According to Job. According to Job, Satan with the most high. Being called one of the son of the most high. So Yahweh Shai did not go into the grave, in, uh, into hell, and preach no wonders. Preach the scriptures was breaking down and doing sit-downs with the spirits that so-called was in hell. No, it wasn't so. Read of Revelation 6, 9-10, said the, the souls of them that were slain was with the Most High. Job said the, the, the evil and the good are in the same place. It have no reason to go and preach in the, in the grave. To no corpse. This is Galatians. Galatians chapter 4. Verse 3. It says even we. Who were children. Were in bondage under the elements of the world. So that is the ones. Who Yahweh Shai went and freed that were in prison. Us. Israelites. The Gentiles talking about the Israelite foreigners. Who didn't know they were Israel. Because you people talk about the Jews and the Gentiles. Now the Jews were only talking about Judah, Benjamin and Levi. Israel is 12 tribes. What happened to the other tribes? Did the Lord just forget? Paul said the Lord will not cast off his people which he foreknew. Hence the reason, the reason why he said that because the Jews didn't want to have nothing to do with the other tribes. Because they were living after the manner of the other nations. That is why Paul made that reference in Romans chapter 11. And verse 1. So what about the other the other tribes? Those were the Gentiles that Paul was, was speaking about. Alright? Verse, verse 4. It says, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Did it say to redeem them that were dead in the grave? Redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of son. And because ye are sons, now you might ask, well, what happened to those people that were before the Lord? Now remember, I said it have reincarnation according to the scriptures. That which had been is that which shall be, and there is no new thing under the sun. So those people that were there back then, they come back. They come back. Did not Yahweh Shai said that this generation shall not pass until all be fulfilled? That generation died over 2,000 years ago. If that was the case, if it didn't have reincarnation, then Yahweh Shai would have been lying. And the scripture said it's impossible for him to lie. That generation don't come back again. So then therefore, it, those souls that died before Yahweh Shai, they come back now. 
and who to receive repentance, receive repentance, and who destined for that, they destined for that. Alright? Verse 6, Galatians 4 and 6. And because ye are sons, Yahweh had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And that is how he went to loose them that were in prison. Alright? That is how he went to minister to them that were in prison, according to 1 Peter 3.19. All right, it says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir to Yahweh Tree, Mashiach. Howbeit then, when ye knew not Yahweh, ye did the service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known Yahweh, or rather, are known of Yahweh, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements wherein ye desire to be in bondage? First Peter um, 3.19 Christ coming in preaching uh, in spirit in spirit did not the scripture say in Galatians 4.6 it says and because ye are son God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts good First Peter 3.19 it says Mashiach coming in the spirit Lord coming the volume of the book to the apostles Mashiach coming in the spirit, preached to those spirits which were in prison, who were us that were in under bondage under the elements of the world. So no, Yahweh Shai did not die and go into a fiery pit, battle Satan, and preach unto the spirits that were down there and then deliver them. No doubt that, that, that is fairy tale. The scripture says you are too superstitious. That is not according to the scriptures. That is not according to the scriptures. Alright. Going on to the um the fort. It says the prophet Hosea foretold of the descent of Mashiach into hell. Hosea 14, um 13, 14. Placing these words into the mouth of the Messiah. O debt, I will be thy debt, and oh hell, I will be thy bite. And first Corinthians 15, you know, cut out Zechariah. For tells the redemption of limbo of the father in Zechariah 9:11. It says, "Though I'm just gonna plug in this charger real quick." All right. It says, "Though also by the blood of thy testament has sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit." So then they will say, hey, "That pit talking about that pit talking about hell." Let me go to Zechariah. You see what Zachariah says. Zechariah 9 verse 11. It says, As for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit. Out of the um, the pit wherein is no water. No, you have to, to be careful with one thing. Now the scriptures speaks metaphorically. All right, Galatians chapter 4 says these things are allegory, means they're symbolic. All right, now let me look up this site here. It says some metaphors of the Bible. It says metaphors in the Bible are a brief, a brief review by Keith H. Hepworth. It says many of the deeper meanings of the Old Testament are missed because metaphors are used extensively. Examples of this are eating and drinking, which refer to learning spiritual truth or the word. Just like Zechariah 9 11, as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water, meaning where there is no understanding. Did not the scripture say, um, Drink, O my soul, understanding? All right. Let me read this real quick. This is Isaiah 55 verse 1. It says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And ye that have no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come Buy wine and milk without money and without price. 
Now, what I was talking about, I talk about the Lord giving you back this understanding. This is Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 7. It says, How shall I pardon thee for this? For thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by truth in the harlot houses. All right? Lord fed it to the full with this word. Did not the scripture say you, you hewed out broken cisterns that cannot hold any water? That was talking about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right? That is what we're talking about. So, Zachariah, going back to Zachariah. Zechariah 9 verse 11 it says as for thee also by the blood of the covenant I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water meaning the Lord can send us out of slavery but upon being in slavery we lost our heritage the Lord gave us back this water out of a belly can and flow rivers of living water the Lord gave us back our understanding in captivity you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Alright? That was just allegories and the pit just talking about because back then when you look up um like in you know, like old prisons, it would have been like a hole dug in the ground where they just cast the person in. And for you to come out, you would have had to probably hang a rope down or a ladder for you to climb out. That was the pit. The pit just talking about an an entrapment, basically like a prison. Wasn't talking about hell. All right, Colossians two fifteen it says, despoiling the principalities of the powers, he had exposed them confidently. Scripture said we're not we're not wrestling against um flesh and and blood. All right. With seven, um, reference seven, it says, "Lift up your gates, O princes, which ye have, which the medieval gloss interprets, that ye princes of hell." <laughs> Let me look up this word hell. All right, so you look up this word hell. I'll look up the word hell in Deuteronomy. It's H seventy five eighty five. And it says what? Shawa al, which means what? The grave. Psalms. Same word, 7585. The grave. Jonah. The grave. Let go to Peter. It says what? Tartaro. Means what? Eternal torment cast down into hell. So Matthew has to said. Says what? Gehenna. Which when you look up Gehenna means the valley of the son of Hinnom. Gehenna or Gehenom, a valley of Jerusalem, used figuratively as the name of the place or state of everlasting punishment. Hell. So when you look up hell, hell was just a figure, a figure of speech. That is all hell was talking about. When the scripture said that the Lord Yahweh shall descended into hell, it means that he died. He went into the grave. When Yahweh Shai was talking about casting into hell, he was talking about the word they would have been Gehenna, which means it has been cast into extreme fire, extreme torment, which was referring to the most high punishment coming in World War III. So that, that doctrine we the pastors have with Yahweh Shai descended into hell, that is not scriptural. When he said he descended into hell, it means that he died. He never went and had no battle with Satan. He died. And by shedding his blood, gave us the chance to come back to the most and receive everlasting life. That is how he got the victory over death and hell and received the key. Means he 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 could choose who to give everlasting life to. Because two thirds of Israel are gonna be destroyed. Alright? And with that, hope it was edifying. Wanna give or praise this Tiaba Shemi Shai, Bahasham Harakwa, Raka Kurash. Give double the to the apostles of great mercy to not rule well. Salutations to the men of the whole land since Selek. This is Makazar saying Shalom.